Hi there and welcome to John's Waters Joint and as you can see from that mean and moody intro I am doing something a little bit different today simply because I am in a Royal Rumble £100 watch challenge with 9 other guys and my job is to try and convince you that I have the best watch you can buy for £100 Now there weren't any criteria given for this, it was simply the best watch you could find for £100 but I thought I would dig a bit deeper for myself and I came up with a few criteria so this is what I came up with I think it must be a GADA type watch, a watch you can go anywhere, do anything with. So within that, it would have to look sleek. It can be worn to work, interviews, meetings, funerals, meals, special occasions. It can also be worn at the beach. You can swim with it, you can paddleboard with it, or you can even wear it on your mountain bike or even when you go to the gym. For me, it's also important you can take it on holiday and not worry about it. It can be one watch you can take or you can take it out camping in the wilds. Now, I also prefer it to be from a big name brand and it must have a good warranty, which this watch is. For me, it had to be stainless steel and nothing else. So that is the case here as well. Also, it must have at least 100 meters of water resistance and that 100 meters of water resistance couldn't be questioned. It's from a brand that you know tests their watches and you know when they say it's 100 meters water resistance, it is 100 meters water resistance. So that knocked a few of my other options out of the way. For me, it had to have a sapphire crystal and it had to be accurate as well. And this one is accurate to half a second per day. And it also has to be reliable, a grab and go, and you don't have to worry about it stopping. And in this one, it's a quartz watch and it's got a 10 year long life battery. So these are the criteria I set for myself. I was lucky. I bought three watches in, one of these watches fitted that criteria and I'm actually really happy with it. I didn't have to go fishing anywhere else. There were a couple of other notable mentions, I'll get to that later on. What you're going to have to do today guys is look through my video, check it out, see what you think of the watch and then look through the other videos from the other nine competitors. I'll leave a link in the description below. Once you go there, check out their videos, then leave a vote, see who you think has got the best watch and let's uh, see where we go from there. Of course you're going to vote for me, aren't you guys? You are going to vote for me, aren't you guys? Say yes, John. Say yes, John. Right, okay. So let's get on with it. Now, of course, I wouldn't really try to influence you in any way at all, would I? That's just not how I roll. Anyone who knows me knows that's the case. Let's move on, shall we? Right, of course, this is the Casio Edifice EFR S108D7AVUEF. And if anyone tries to make me repeat that, I'm going to come after you. I will find you. I'm not going to repeat it again. So this is one of the Casio Edifice range, and it is a range of watches, so you're not just stuck with one watch here. This also comes in a white colour as well. But before I go into all the specifications of this watch and get up close with it, let's have a look and see what it wears like on the rest outside. So as can be seen quite clearly there, this watch has got something else going for it. It's a beautiful size, wears lovely, wears impeccably in my wrist at six and three quarter inches for your reference out there. It comes in this nice concise little box with the edifice logo on it. All the logo numbers on the back there, the reference numbers that you need. That's the outer, this is the inner, quite a nice little Casio edifice box there. On the inside you get the standard pillow that the watch sits on. You get your edifice tag there with the sapphire crystal logo and it tells you it's 10 bar water resistance and it's a stainless steel case and that's all your reference numbers on the back and then it tells you any modules etc and gives you the instructions on the watch itself and for your information you can see there i've actually removed four links from this watch so this watch will easily fit somebody up to seven and three quarter inches so very nicely sized watch indeed but you don't want to see this Let's have a closer look at the watch. 
And here she is in her slimline glory. Look at that, eight millimeters thin, as they say. What a lovely size and style of watch. As you saw, it wore impeccably on my wrist. And it's just the kind of watch that will easily sit underneath a cuff. I've actually got my blue denim shirt on here today. And as you can see, it just tucks under there with ease. Easily fit underneath that, a shirt, a cuff, and also a suit, etc. So it wears really, really nicely. Just put that out there. Yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful little watch. Very easily to get uh, nicely sized as well. Just uh, a breeze with the little push pins. And you can see that the clasp there, nice and simple. I'll come back in again. Yeah, three micro adjusts. Push adjusters there. You're not going to get a milled clasp, but it's actually a thicker inside there than you would get normally. Nice and secure with that edifice logo there. So it's only pressed, but it does the job. Nice little bracelet with nice little touches on it. You can see there, it's an oyster style, but you've got these lovely little polished center links. Uh, and they're not polished all the way up. It's just enough to give a, a bit of attention to detail as you have along the sides there. And then it's an integrated bracelet. And I tend to prefer this with a Garda watch simply because when you take it off and on uh, the, the watch head itself, you tend to find that there's a disparity between the wear on this and the wear on the watch. I like them to age together. It just makes it more cohesive. And I really like that. Because that kind of watch, you can. You can wear that anywhere. I've seen myself wearing that kind of thing to the gym and that kind of thing on stage. When I was a singer for years, Casio Edifice was my go-to watch. It just takes a hammering and you don't have to worry about it. It's just going to keep on going. So uh, as I said earlier on, I give you the reference number. I'm not going to go through that again. But you can see what it's taking its cues from. It's Odderman's PK Royal Oakish, And you can see that from that octagonal head on the top of that uh, bezel there. And you're also looking at Patek Philippe Nautilus. There were those little wings on the side there. Just a little nod to both of them. But this is its own thing, especially when you see those little screws there. They're not on top. They're actually moved down to the side. And then you've got that brushing, that uh, that linear brushing down uh, the, the face of the watch there on top of the bezel, on top of the case. And then it continues down onto the bracelet itself. Really nicely done. Nice horizontal brushing on the side across the top of those flanges. And you can see those polished accents there just going across the top of those little wings there across the top of that chamfered edge down to that sharp angled lug then underneath and back underneath here really nice little touches what a beautiful angled little watch so dimensions wise you're looking at a 38 millimeter diameter watch and it's 40 including those little side flanges there but it wears to all intents and purposes like a 38 the lug to lug with the male end link there is a 49.7 but you can see it drops straight down and on my six and three quarter inch which you would categorize as a small wrist, it wears really well, so it doesn't uh, bother me at all. Water resistance, which is very important, 100 meters. If Casio say it's 100 meters water resistance, you can bet your bottom dollar it's 100 meters of water resistance. They don't put that on there lightly, and it confirms it on the back of the case. You get all the information on the back of the case there, everything you need to know. Excellent, really nice. Press at the back. But you've also, I think you've got double O-rings plus other technology in there. Keeps the water out of that face of the watch. The thing I really like about the face of this watch as well is it's got like an ash effect grain on it. You'd think it was like a quartzite or something, but it's an ash effect. You think of the grain in an ash tree. That's what it looks like to me. Absolutely gorgeous. And you can see there are just the little accents. Uh, for the sapphire there in gold matches the colour, the tone of the second hand. And also the little rings at the edges there going round the edges of the air markers. And that chapter ring kind of reminds me of the Seiko Monster. It's got that kind of look to it as well. There's an awful lot going on here with this watch. It makes it sporty, yet functional. And it makes it a kind of aggressive watch as well, rather than just being a boring, plain watch that you wear to the office. There's something about this watch that I really like. And the thing is, it also comes in a white colour too, if you want that. But the Casio Edifice range, this is the most important thing. You're not just tied to one watch. There's an awful lot of watches out there you can have with the Casio Edifice. You can have more of a chronograph style, more of a, a dress style that's less intrusive than this. But uh, mostly they are quite busy. But I kind of like this one because it's not so fussy. The other edifice I had a couple of years back was the EFR 100D and 110D, which were really quite plain. Uh, but beautiful piano black faces on them with the yellow accents. No longer made, but you can still get them. They're part of the edifice line as well. 
just gorgeous little watches and you can see there the crown has even got that edifice logo on it as well and as i say it's a push pull and it's very very easy to operate and as you can see there it's not bad actually for being on the second hands there you can see it's hitting the second hands pretty well uh, but uh, yeah very nice subtle watch there as well and you can see there's a tiny little beveled edge along that crystal along the top just gorgeous and there's those accents round the side of the bezel there nice little polished edge to match it with the polished little flanges there on the outers of those little wings beautiful and see the chamfered hands where the light catches them and that gold hand superb lovely lovely little watch i'll put it back on my wrist on under the shirt again and i'm going to shoot that pigeon out there he's doing my head in today every time i speak he starts talking there you go gorgeous little watch absolutely gorgeous love it very comfortable watch very easy to get a fit in this one too but how she fare in the dark and now to the all-important loom shop for the casio in this competition and i'll tell you what i'm more than pleasantly surprised nice little pots of loom there very sharp very legible doesn't last all night but it lasts long enough i would say a good couple of hours not as good as you would expect from a dive watch but from a watch which is a gada certainly more than acceptable so very good result there for the casio so again another pass for this guy great stuff back to the studio so there you go even in the loom department this watch has it also so it's a well-rounded watch with really good specs now let me just kind of summarize here for you because the only thing that was restricting me was this 100 pound category as it were I would have went straight to AliExpress if I thought I could get the best quality watch for £100. I don't think that's the case. £100 is just a bit too restrictive and I think there are better watches out here a la this choice. Anyone can get this watch. You can go into the Casio website worldwide or you can go into your local retail store. You're bound to find a Casio. I'm bound to find a Casio edifice. That's why I went for this. The other choices I would have had in this range are watches I reviewed before. So one of those watches that I reviewed was the Carison C8208. Now that was a great little watch. It was pretty much a straight up homage. I reviewed it in the blue color. Gorgeous little watch and one of my top picks of the year. However, it was compromised by that bad choice of crystal. It meant that you weren't really seeing the time clearly. If they have a version 2 of that watch, that's going to be the one to beat this year. Absolutely. Watch this space with that one. It's a really good little watch. Another one from Carison was a C8209, and that was basically a Tag Heuer uh, homage as well. It's too much of a homage for me, but again, it could be had for under £100. I believe that one was £75. Both of these I've actually had up on the screen for you to see there. One that I couldn't actually get, I tried twice. I had two orders for this one. It was from Pagani Design, and that was the retro Black Bay Panda look. And I ordered it twice in two different colours, and both of them got stuck in custom, so I never actually got it. So I was really disappointed with that. Of course, the other thing that everybody probably wanted me to have as my choice would be the Pagani Design PD1701. It was okay. It really was okay. I didn't really like that one because I think the bracelet really spoiled that watch. Of course, other choices would have been Steel Dive. Steel Dive SD 1970 was one that I bought in for this to see if it would actually suffice. And you've seen from my recent review, that one didn't go too well at all. But thank goodness I got a refund for that watch. So... Yeah, let's negate that one. Another obvious option would have been G-Shock, but you have to remember, it has to be a universal watch, something you can wear to a funeral, a meal, stuff like that. Yeah, some people can do that. I think the CEO of Casio does that, but it's not the norm. When you go to something formal, you want to have something nice. So that's why I never chose G-Shock. It was the obvious choice. So these are the kind of outliers with this. So to summarize here, let's just have a look at this watch. So this watch here, it's a cracking little watch. It's well sized, it's beautiful looking, it sits beautiful on the wrist, it's very universal, you can wear it anywhere. The finishing on it is just sublime for the price you're paying for this watch. Lovely little touches and nods to other major brands, but it's its own thing, it's not an homage watch. The price I paid for the watch, I'll put it up on screen just now. So I paid for it used, and I paid well under £100 for it, but it's readily available for £100 and just under just now so it's no problem there at all and the thing is you can get these in plenty of styles it's also available in white and there are different styles of edifice out there so as you can see putting this on the wrist for one more time 
this is me going to sign off. I think this is a fantastic choice for £100 or under, and I think it merits a win for this watch. If it doesn't, then at least I've tried. It's a really good choice for all the reasons that was specified beforehand, and I'm just going to leave it there, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe, and also subscribe to the other competitors here, guys. They're really good guys, nice bunch, and uh, it's really good getting to know them over email and stuff like that. So really, really good spirit of the competition, a lot of hard work behind the scenes, and I, I say thank you to the guys for that as well. So this is John from John's Watch Joint. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and of course, please vote for me, or I will come after you. Ta-ra for now.